the last clip, I listed assumptions we've made, and I think I omitted one. I should have listed the assumption that direct experience of the ultimate ground of existence is possible. That's what mystical experience is. And there was also another item in the last clip about how in the 1960s, some proponents of the so-called psychedelic drugs, um, LSD and psilocybin, mescaline, claimed that they could give genuine mystical experience, experience of the uncreated light. And I'm not equipped to uh, discuss whether that's true or not, but I do want to include that other assumption about direct experience of um, ultimate ground existence. So I want to try and look ahead. And I think that natural theology could give us a vision for the future if it were widely accepted. If it were widely accepted that there was one objective reality, the ground of being, and that that was God or Godhead, and that gods who are persons are just kind of personifications of that. That would give us a, a common basis for all religion. It would even allow us a trans-species religion if uh, intelligent aliens in the form of spiders or rabbits or whatever landed. We'd be able to talk to them about God. So we'd see God as objective and we'd be able to perhaps do theology just as scientists do chemistry. There's no such thing as French chemistry or Chinese chemistry. It's chemistry. It's talking about an objective reality. And in the same way, perhaps people in France and China and other countries could discuss God as an objective reality, single reality. This idea of vision of the future, it, it makes me think of having grown up in the 1960s of the original Star Trek and how my opinion is that the acting was good. Some scripts were good. Some scripts weren't. Some scenery looked like they cut corners, which they probably did. But the original Star Trek created a world that was enticing. Uh, at the time, three years previously, it had been the Cuban Missile Crisis. Uh, there was a danger of the United States and Russia having a nuclear war. But in Star Trek, there was a, a, a Russian on the bridge of the enterprise. And there was a woman, a black woman, no less. It was a multiracial, multi-gender world where there wasn't discrimination. And I think that world was attractive. And to me, a world where God is uh, thought to be an objective reality and can be found using reason and not reliance on any ancient text uh, is an attractive world. What would it be like? Would it be a panacea? Would it cure all problems? No, of course not. In structure, it would be similar to Catholicism. In Catholicism, everyone acknowledges the Trinity, but uh, especially I heard in Italian villages, some of them have their patron saints. And similarly, in this paradigm, everyone would acknowledge the ultimate ground existence as Godhead, but different societies might have their different gods or persons that they're attracted to and worship. And I think it wouldn't necessarily improve the world. I mean, in uh, uh, medieval Europe, there were terrible, terrible religious wars among Christians, different denominations of Christianity. So I don't think that it would be a panacea, but I think it would be a step forward. And there it gets into a kind of faith in the truth. If it's true, it's important. There might not be any obvious practical consequences. And I want to draw on my um, I uh, was at Penn State. I got a BS in electrical engineering, and I, I've forgotten more than I know at the moment about electrical engineering. But I did learn a few things. And 
In ancient Greece, there were two phenomena that were known, that certain stones could be attracted to each other, and that was magnetism, and that if you rubbed silk on amber, you could create static electricity. And this was known, but probably practical people said, so what? Over a thousand years later, I believe the compass was invented in China, I believe. But anyway, in the 1500s, magnetism had been put to work. The compass, navigation, very practical. But electricity was still a, a toy, um, an obscure little, apparently useless phenomena. But scientists, people, let's say, who wanted to know the truth, investigated that phenomena. It was in a phenomenon that they wanted to understand. And, oh, let me step back. Uh, Newton, when he devised the theory of gravity, the import for a religious and theological world was really earth-shaking. I believe going back to Aristotle, people had assumed that the heavens were an entirely different animal. Uh, there was the earth with its four elements, um, earth, fire, air, and water. But heaven was the ethereal plane. It was entirely different. And when Newton said that the same thing that makes the atom fall to the earth makes the moon go around the earth, he was basically saying the laws that apply here apply there. And that was very revolutionary. And then getting back to electricity, as, we, as I mentioned earlier, when Ben Franklin invented the lightning rod, that was, lightning had been considered a manifestation of the wrath of God. And he was saying, no, this is a natural phenomenon and we can control it. So electricity was being, or knowledge of electricity was being put to use. Later on, James Clerk Maxwell, um, wrote down his four equations, Maxwell's equations, that described the behavior of electromagnetism. He had realized that electricity and magnetism are two sides of the same phenomena. And those equations predicted radio waves, which led to the invention of the radio. And I think I read once that when the Titanic was going down, they radioed for help and another ship came. Now, a lot of lives were lost, but perhaps all of them would have been lost without the radio. So electricity was becoming more and more useful. And in our daily lives, uh, cell phones and PCs and all sorts of things depend on electricity. Uh, later, Einstein looked at Maxwell's equations and there's things in physics, in physics called inertial frames of reference. And he was puzzled because of the relation between them and Maxwell's equations. I won't get into that. But he, by that investigation, came up with the theory of relativity, which is the famous equals mc squared which led to nuclear weapons and nuclear power and could lead to the destruction of the uh, human race if uh, there's ever a nuclear exchange. But the point is, this little phenomena of rubbing uh, silk against amber would have been a, a power trick for centuries and centuries. You know, in the dark, maybe I could get some static electricity and see a little spark, but it was of no use. But by investigating and finding the truth, it was turned to tremendous use. And if what I'm doing here is true, it could have tremendous implications. What they are, I have no idea, but it could. So I think it's important to care about what is true and it's impossible, at least for me to look ahead, I remember in the 19, about 1970, a book came out called Future Shock, and I believe it was written by an Alvin Toffler. And if I remember correctly, it was projecting changes that would happen in society and what would happen if those changes continued. There'd be people living in communes, maybe it said geodesic domes, I don't remember. There'd be open marriages, uh, there'd be uh, children raised by the tribe rather than just the parents, all sorts of things that didn't happen. But it was a vision, it was a projection about the future, and I guess a lot of it turned out to be wrong. Through no fault of the author, it's just that things changed. So um, I'm not going to try to predict the future, but I think, I, have a, I guess I have a faith that what is true matters. 
And using that story of electricity and magnetism, I think that dramatizes that sometimes the truth matters a great deal and leads to tremendous power. So I guess this is titled looking ahead, but I'm really not looking ahead very well. I, I don't know, I, I can't see into the future, but I do have the faith that what we're doing is important. And if true, it'd be very consequential. Thanks.